Oh, they, it, okay, that is, that is, that is, that has been recorded. All right, great stuff. All right, okay. So, so ladies and gentlemen, I am going to try to make this session interactive as far as possible. So I am going to here and there throw in a number of questions and um, uh, let us a little bit have a conversation regarding things. Uh, just before I'm going to kick off, um, um, I, I, I'm not going to use this session if anybody still have some outstanding information, but just briefly, just to indicate to everybody, please, it is incredibly important that we are all on Canvas, um, as this is the platform that we will use and the platform where you will submit your assignment, do your online test, uh, do your examination, as well as then all the slides and everything will be uploaded. Although I will share these presentations with you separately as well to your uh, email addresses. So if anybody still is struggling with anything, you must please send us an email ASAP so that we can help to sort that out. I have seen already days uh, the people that have gone onto Canvas. This is quite a number of people, so I guess that we are almost done with the onboarding part. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first part, of the first subject uh, that we do for this part with Studio. And then there are two remaining subjects, which will be Management 400, which is more strategic management, and then also the subject of Research Methodology. Now, for Research Methodology, as I've mentioned also in the introduction, you don't write an exam. You only need to submit research proposals. So for our part of the study, you will only have two exams for the three subjects. Please follow the dates as provided on your um, in Canvas, as well as the dates that I will share with you in the WhatsApp group on email. Uh, please just ignore any other programs or any dates. I will make sure that you get all the correct dates. And also, please, we will not leave anybody behind. Uh, we will make sure that you get all the opportunities and um, and whatever we can ask you to do, we'll make sure that you are able to do that and then to be successful in completing this part of the journey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so yeah, online classes always, always have limitations. I do prefer to be in the class rather um, uh, still a bit traditional when it comes to that, as I like to see people interacting with people. But yeah, no, well, circumstances sometimes ask that we need to go online. So welcome at the first contact session then for leadership. Keep in mind that in the first December next week and Thursday evening, there will be the second one. So before I'm going to kick off and before I'm going to start um, our session, um, you are more than welcome to use the chat function if during the presentation and our discussion, if you would like to make a comment or a suggestion or put a question out, you're more than welcome to use the chat function. I will, when I do not present, have a look at the chat and we will talk about that and respond to that as well. So maybe that's to help us to kick off. And I really do not want any academic answer here, ladies and gentlemen. I really would like just an answer. And I'm going to ask that all of you, please write for me in your chat, in the chat box. There was a type in your message. You'll see the chat is there on top there. I, I'm just a very simple question. And in a very few words, I would like to for you to tell me, what do you think is leadership? Give me your own definition. Um, close, close your books. Don't open the books. Close the books. Give me your own own definition. And what I would like you to do is to, in the chat box, just quickly write for me and try to keep it as short as possible as well. But let me just give you a minute or two and give everybody the chance to um, write something for us there. I see Rolina is quick there out of the blocks, Lou. 100 meter sprinter. 
Right, and then while we are typing and everybody is sharing their information, as we present, ladies and gentlemen, and if you have a question or you want to know something, please just raise your hand and I will assist as, I, as far as I can. So let us get those answers in. Sarah, you've shared this. Shalene, thank you very much. Lauren, you've shared. Taryn. Come, let's everyone throw something out there. There's Russell there. Thank you very much, Russell. All right. Give you another 30 seconds. Thanks, Liesl. Thanks, Miranda. Nice. Right, so that's almost, uh, I don't think it's everybody yet. So uh, let us get that ball rolling. Another 20 seconds. Please, I want everybody just to share with us their thoughts. Thanks, Justin. I think there are still a few people that didn't give an answer there. Give you a few minutes, few, few seconds. All right, great stuff. All right, so there's a couple of people that have shared there with us. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, well, I sometimes forget, all right, but I think both of you already now will be familiar with my name, so I don't think I need to share that again. But please, um, when you interact with me and ask questions, please use my name. I always say to people that what my mother decided to call me, and in honor of her, you are more than welcome just to call me on my first name. I uh, I prefer that. And there were some more people, Rose also there, and Kelly Bojile also. All right, okay. So let's share a few of the thoughts that people are saying here. I see Rulin say, it's the ability to lead and follow. I like that one. I like the lead and the follow. So it means that sometimes we lead, sometimes we follow. To get a team of people to get to a common goal, so it? Great stuff. I think that the question of goals are always important when we would like to talk about leadership. So Rika, showing people what and how to do certain things by example. So there is like us, that old thing we always say is lead by example. Né? How often did we hear that in many, many places? So Rain say someone that takes direction and leads. Ah, so Rain, very important. Direction, very important. Barton, guiding, guiding and coaching. Critical aspects, critical aspects in leadership. Romeo, having a responsibility to guide people to a set goal. Yeah, the call come out responsibility. Sarah say inspire. Yeah, that is absolutely an incredible thing. Authenticity, or author, being authentic, empathy, transparency. Thanks, Aline. I think I cannot emphasize that more. Openness. Guiding and leading towards a common goal. Yeah, we got that one as well there, Elias. Um, lead and guide people, mentoring and coaching and showing Russell as we've heard, teaching and coaching, Felicia again coming up, driving change, there's another one, very important, uh, make team influence, I like that, I like that. Uh, you need to motivate and build your team, be part of your team, teamwork, there comes teams in. Guiding and leading by example, again, very important there, ability to organize, lead and control a group of people. Being able to motivate and leash individual potential. Ah, that's a, a powerful one there. Um, the ability to really uh, activate people's potential. And then Rose say, having the ability to guide a group of individuals to um, and follow your orders. Rose, that first part is nice. That second one, um, 
The second one, but you know what, I, 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 I didn't give you a lot of time to write, so maybe not just to follow your orders, but also maybe you just want to add there to freely follow your orders, you know, or being willing to follow uh, your orders, because obviously one can always use your power to make people to follow orders and not necessarily that people will lead because they, they want to. No, thank you very much for sharing. I think that there were there were some great um, things coming forward. And I think also what you would notice that there is a huge range of things that people have mentioned. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you up front that many often people believe that leadership is a easy subject. Um, leadership provide um, an easy answers. Um, it is, uh, we don't really have to prepare for leadership, you know, we kind of, kind of like write everything down and, and that can work. So just a word of caution that leadership is not that easy to understand. Leadership is also a very complex subject. And I need to emphasize that in part of the preparation for this particular model or subject, it is critically important that you need to make sure that you understand completely the different viewpoints, uh, the different um, ideas, the different methodologies, the different theories that people have set forward to try to help us explain the concept of leadership. And this is quite important. Your textbook only contains a number of concepts regarding leadership, but I can promise you your textbook only touch about 10% of what is leadership and understanding leadership. So I would also not suggest if you guys want to go and read up further, you're more than welcome, but also be very carefully because you might get yourself that eventually you find yourself like in a maze and you do not know, must we go right, left, straight, or just turn back? And that is the complexity of leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, there's more than almost a thousand definitions of leadership being written around through the world. Uh, some of them substantial, some of them we can probably use, some of them not that substantial and maybe a little bit flimsy, but it just illustrates to us that it's one of those subjects and one of those fields that has got still endless potential of trying to understand the concept of leadership and also what make great leaders. Because here is the thing, ladies and gentlemen, you can achieve a lot in life. You can achieve a lot in organizations without leadership. You can use your power and organizations have power and people in organizations have been appointed and they receive power and they receive legitimate power. Um, and because of that legitimate power, they have the ability to instruct or to command or to tell you what to do. And if you don't, then there's consequences. But that's probably and we can develop successful organizations in that way. And we can grow teams in that way, and we can, but what we have learned is that there are limitations to utilizing that kind of methodology, that kind of way. And we have learned in today's life that the concept of inclusivity, um, the concept of empowerment, the concept of engagement to be heard, becomes much, much more important as maybe in terms of the traditional way in which we have run many organizations. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, they were highly successful organizations around the world being built on very traditional ways, very traditional principles of management, of plan and organize, instructing people to do, commanding them to do, and then they do because they know if I don't do, I might lose my job. They are very successful organizations and they were and they were they were they were they were spread all over the world. 
and they're successful in many ways. But if we want to indicate, obviously, in terms of a company that have a profit motive, they were even successful. Some of these companies are listed companies and they are doing very well. But here is one of the secrets I want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen. And this is work done by a researcher with the name of Poras from the Stanford University in the USA. And what he have established as that and try to determine what is that the difference between the so-called very gold organizations in other words those that is really really kind of on the top of the game they are really year after year they just seem to be the best versus others that are doing exceptionally well but they are not the number ones and he have discovered in his research that the concept of leadership have made the difference. So here's the first truth. So research have already indicated to us that if you are able to look at and utilize what we have know about leadership, the potential that you can create an A team, a company with the best performance year after year after year, is more likely than a company that is not utilizing sound leadership, but rather using power to demand or to instruct people to do things. And they still do quite well. It's not like they're going to close down tomorrow and they are doing very well, but they are not always there on the top of the game. So let us look at a little bit of introduction. I just want to share a few thoughts with you in terms of leadership and I'm just going to bring up a presentation and if I can just ask somebody who can just open in mics and see if you can see my slideshow. Yes, we can. Oh, thank you very much. So I'm going to first share a few thoughts with you and then we're going to a little bit have a, a discussion. All right. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I, I haven't changed. This is your lecturer. And as I've mentioned that for all academic purposes, uh, you will engage with Christu. Um, Christu has just recently completed his PhD in leadership. He has received high accolades um, internationally for his work that he has done. And he is definitely the kind of person that one can sit down and listen when he talks about leadership. Now, Christu is also a um, an attorney by practice uh, working for Stadio, but he is also an ordained pastor of the church. So he's a, he's, a, he's a gentleman of a lot of skills and a lot of abilities, ladies and gentlemen. And there he just shows some of his, um, uh, his passions that's in life. All right. So the first of all, I just want to share with you a few words on some of the theories of leadership. And I will expect that you guys need to just read up a little bit on that in your textbooks and just familiarize yourself specifically uh, with some of these theories. And this is how they have developed over many years. And if I take many years, uh, you know, I'm talking about more than 100 years um, that they have developed. So way, way, way back, and this was already in the like in the industrial um, revolution and the first industrial revolution. Um, we have started to write about leadership and there were people talking about the great man theory as well as the big five model and, and what these models have in, 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 in common, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that they were all saying that leadership has to do with some traits. All right. Some characteristics some so if for example if i'm larger than life if i'm an extrovert uh, if i when i walk in a room and i command power then that was traditionally seen as amazing leaders um and if you think back many years where people were still fighting wars over land and you know i think about the kings and the queens and and if you have seen some of those movies, uh, you probably will agree with me 
because many of these kings were larger than life. You know, they were warriors. They were, they were, they 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 can take on an army. They were strong, and that was seen as leadership. That was the absolute essence of what is leadership. And then later, people have come up the concept of contingency theories. So contingency have more to do with a situation. So people have realized that depending on how a person deal with a particular situation will demonstrate if the person show leadership abilities, the way I solve a particular situation. So it all depends on what happened at a particular point. Now, if one look at this traditional theories, then one may argue that, but it might be that everybody can be a leader, right? Because some of you might say, well, you know, I know people that in certain situations, wow, they can, they perform excellent. And some of you might say, yeah, well, you know, I, I know this guy, you know, uh, the soccer player, rugby player, sports guy, look at him, big guy, strong guy, look at him, you know, when he speak, you know, the audience keep quiet. Um, great man theory, but look at how he plays the game then. Brilliant, excellent. And then we have also talked about charisma. So that's where also something that says that our leaders must have charisma, you know, they must, and sometimes, and don't confuse charisma with smooth talk, but you know, it's a fine line. So sometimes people say, well, <laughs> that guy is smooth. Uh, he will sell ice to Eskimos. Uh, you know, he's just got that charisma. He just got some air around him. Look at him, you know, kind of thing. And uh, we have truly believed that, wow, this is what's making leaders great. This is what's making leaders absolutely. This is great leaders. And I've, if we read up about these leaders and we go back in the history, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you will see and, and, and you will get so many examples about these people that, that, that and, they, and they meet all this criteria and they were great leaders and they were, have done things which was amazing. But we have moved into a modern age. We are moving into the fourth industrial revolution, ladies and gentlemen, the fifth industrial revolution, the sixth one, the seventh. All right. And if you ask me what is the seventh, it's very simple, ladies and gentlemen, by the six and the seven is where we as humans will have to learn to coexist with robots. So if I can put it in a very practical way, uh, the six, seven industrial revolution will be that your people living next to you in uh, your home, uh, they will be robots living next to you. So you will invite them over for a braai or uh, for, uh, for dinner. Uh, you will go to church with a robot. The robot will go with you to church. That is the six and seven industrial revolution. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. It's on the cards. But as we have progress in leadership, we have started to say that there is new genres in terms of this uh, leadership. And some of the things we have started to develop is what we call transformational or transactional leadership. And more have to do with um, um, the way that I am able to, to change and the way that I'm able to um, adapt, the way that I develop new things. And we all know that the only constant today is change. Um, and it forces all of us to really step up uh, or to step down uh, for those who can retire. But one of the great things is that we know that we are in a constant uh, mode of transformation and we have need leaders that can actually take that lead, put forward a compelling vision of the future of what this company wants to achieve and really then drive and really influence people in such a way that people say, but uh, you know what, I would like to follow that leader. And if you really want to do it, then this is another very important truth about leadership is that you find that people say, but I voluntarily will follow this leader because I believe in what this person is sharing with us. And then the cold notion of servant leadership come up, ladies and gentlemen, and this is where obviously um, where leaders say, not where leaders come and say, what can I do for you? We need to start to engage with people, start to be inclusive, not exclusive. Start to 
really bring people and really influence people in such a way that I really would like to say, but I can walk with you. And where the leaders say, but you know, I'm not always going to walk in the front. I'm going to walk in the middle. I'm going to walk in the back. I'm going to walk in the side. It all depends on what is the need. And then later also, obviously, the question of organic and social capital leaders, ladies and gentlemen. And this is more for us that's in the private sector, more in terms of how do we look after our communities that we are working in? Are, are, are we and our products and our services that we offer, is it, is it really enhancing the social fiber of our communities? Are we really plowing back into our communities? Are we developing leaders from our communities? Or are we just pursuing uh, a profit motive? And doesn't matter what we are doing, as long as the bank is full of money and the shareholders is happy, then wow, we have done it. And later then also Lacey Man who started to look at the concept of authentic leaders. And this is more people that is purely based on the fact that they are true to themselves. They recognize their mistakes. They really can say, I'm sorry about what I've done. And they are just them. They are just human beings. So ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the theories as they have developed over time and and as they have developed as we go along. So I just want to pause now a little bit and just ask uh, anybody who just want to open their mics and maybe just want to share a thought or have a question about these kind of theories. So uh, I want to give like five minutes. Uh, anybody, thought or idea, please just unmute your mic and share with us, talk to us. Before I'm starting asking people. Elias. And mute your mic a bit there for us. Are you there? I'm still here. I'm still ah, here. Great stuff. So Elias, tell Afternoon. me a little bit. What, what do you think about these kind of theories that I've shared with you? Give Look, me they, are very, very interesting. they are very interesting, especially how uh, uh, time evolves as well in okay. terms of adjustment and all that. And, um, you know, it's an understanding for me that you won't get, you know, it depends on people in my view from what I could process. And uh, probably there wouldn't be any uh, one model criteria mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes so 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 yeah it's it's very interesting you know okay so just All to right. try and get an understanding of the depth characteristics and stuff like that great stuff Thanks. great stuff Elias thank you very much I appreciate Romy asks can one be born with leadership qualities or is it just something that that was believed for all uh for, for all at this time all right so wh what do you guys say Let's 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 assist Romeo there to say, are, are we born leaders or ca can we develop leaders? Is it is it is is leadership for everybody or is this is leadership? I an think it's a bit thing? of y yes. Who's speaking? Sunnet. Sunnet. Yes. Go ahead, Sunnet. I think it's a bit of both um, characteristics that your parents might have had that's been given through to you um, and how you were brought up as well. Um, and then I think leadership can be taught as well if you have the emotional wellness um, or the courage to be able to do it. Okay, so Sanit, you're saying there's a bit of genetics, the yes. environmental factors, mm. and then a, a little bit of like what we can teach or learn you to be to become. Yes. All right, okay. Great stuff, thank you Sanit. Anybody else? I, I agree with, with Sanit. Uh, I think it's a, it's also a bit of both. Um, you've got natural born leaders um, that you know they are born with the ability to to lead people and they just do it freely so and they are authentic in how they 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 execute their leadership uh, skills. So I I really believe it's a bit of both. If they have to maybe nature the the talent or the skill, then, you know, they, they're not working it off the ground. 
they're just nurturing it, but it's there, you know, they're just mm-hmm. enhancing their, their skill or talent, if I may put it that way. Uh-huh. Thank you very much for that sharing there. Justin also say agrees with Sanet as well. So a little bit genetics, a little bit environmental factors, and a little bit of um, what we are, what we will, what you will teach and learn. Uh, and this could obviously be from school right through uh, in terms of your career. Uh, Rami say thanks, Annette. Uh, people tend to take a back seat and believe they can't be leaders, mainly because there's no one in the family leadership position. Rami, that's also a very true statement you're making. Um, so this is the question. Can all of us be leaders? What do you say? Yes or no? I say yes. Okay. <laughs> I was about to type that everyone is actually, I think everyone is actually born a leader. It's about how you nature it and the courage to to exercise it, to take the lead and educate yourself about leadership. Okay, Rose. We can all be leaders. There, I see a lot of people there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There, Taren, I think yes. Everyone can lead in different ways. No, thank you very much, Taren. I think that that's very true. So the question is that we don't all have to be this larger than life, um, getting accolades right through the world, leading the whole country to something. But we can all lead in a very small way, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Most of you. You know, you are involved, you've got, um, you are maybe our parents. And and I think that even in your home, um, there's a great deal of a leadership that needs to happen. Uh, yes, you must manage your home and, and you must manage your family. But that, that is something different. You know, just to make sure everybody gets on time at the right place and everybody's up in the mornings and everybody is at school on time and things. That's basic management basic planning and organizing, but then there's leadership. And you need to lead your, lead your children. And what do I say when I say you need to lead your children? It means that it is part of your responsibility to create such an environment that your children can become or to live out or to become what they have been offered in terms of their full potential. So as a leader, it becomes your responsibility to remove some of the barriers, take away some of those things, create an environment which your children can strive, where they can really explore, where they can make mistakes and not get crucified for that, where they can know it's safe that I will be allowed to do certain things and make a mistake and learn from that mistake and eventually take that learning experience to become even better or to help me developing my full potential. Ladies and gentlemen, each one of us, and that is what I believe, can be a leader. But I want just to share this truth with you this afternoon. And if you do not get this right, there is no way that you ever will be a leader. And this is the truth. You first need to learn to lead yourself before you try to lead others. Let me say that again. You first need to learn how to lead yourself before you try to lead others. Now, now I'm not saying that you need to, to lead yourself and become perfect in that. You, you will never accomplish that. But if you are not going to do some kind of an attempt to start to lead yourself and grow and develop in that process, the ability for you to lead other people is going to be almost zero. So what do I mean by saying, learn how to lead yourself? Chat a little bit with me, write down there in your blocks there. What do you think does it mean? You can also unmute your mic and talk to me. What do you think does it mean to say, I need to learn to lead myself before I lead others. What does leading yourself means for you? Who's talking to me? Hello, afternoon. Yes. Um, I think for me, leading myself would be holding myself accountable in 
every way. For instance, if I set a goal for myself and saying this year I'm studying, if I don't follow through with whatever I have to deliver, I am not leading myself. Because if you lead people, you need to give them timelines. They need to deliver on deadlines. So if you can't do that yourself, you can't expect someone else to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I 100% agree with that. Uh, Marilyn say have direction, Rosie have discipline. All right. Um, so let's hear some of the other people there. Um, Russell, what are you saying? Uh, what do you think is um, about leading yourself? Hi, yeah, from my side, leading yourself speaks to having clear uh, directions and goals and actually um, executing or coming up with, with plans to make sure that you execute um, to achieve them. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Justin, support today. Um, he said, when setting goals for yourself, striving to achieve those goals. Sarah also, Sarah also say, having set goals, having integrity, being an example, can ask others to do what you want. Great stuff, guys. I, I, I absolutely agree with all of what you're sharing with me. And it's I think it's about deciding is what is your direction? What is that what you want to achieve in life? What is that that you would like to accomplish? And then irrespective of whatever challenge will be thrown at you, you will stick to that goal. You will accomplish that. There's one thing that my father taught me in life. He always said to me, Hank, he, he passed away when I was when I was young. He said to me, um, whenever you take on something, all right? And he said to me, you don't have to take on a lot of things in life. He said, you don't have to do a million things. But he said that whatever you take on, he said, make sure that you finish that. And that words have stuck with me, ladies and gentlemen, for my entire life. If I have started something, I always remember my dad's words. It says, finish this thing. Um, at one stage of my life, I took up cycling and things like that. And I'm, I'm back in my cycling mode again, ladies and gentlemen. It's just my part of my, my own little bit adventurous side. And, um, and I know that, uh, but I'm not that competitive as I were like 10 years ago. And um, I remember that I, I've tackled on some very extreme specifically off-road mountain bike tracks. And ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you it was a painful exercise to finish, a painful exercise. Um, but, and it doesn't matter. Some of them, I took 12 hours, but I finish it. All right. And I'm not talking now if you get injured and you're not able to do that. that. That's a different case. But, you know, I was still there and I decided, you know, I just have to finish this and I've completed. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take me, ladies and gentlemen, because this is my own race. This is me achieving. But the most important thing that I would like just to share with you this afternoon, that whatever you set out as your goals, and I agree with Liesl as well, that, that in the process, you also need to know your strengths and weaknesses. And the reason why, because you may need other people on your journey to help you with some of the weaknesses. You may have sometimes to go and just support, you know, just get that little bit of support and say, wow, I'm not sure how I'm going to get through this one. But and this is, this is where then leaders have mentors, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a mentor in my life. I know my weaknesses. I don't know all of them. I still learn some of them. But I know I can speak to this person or that person, and I know they will help me. And vice versa, if they need assistance, I will also be there to help and assist them. self listen, follow your principle. Um, Hope, I cannot agree more with you of the principles. Because whatever you said in life, life, and you see, ladies and gentlemen, criminals are excellent leaders. Don't doubt for one moment. They are not leaders. <laughs> Hitler was an amazing leader, ladies and gentlemen. He had how many people following him? So keep in mind that the outcome of leadership, what you want to achieve of leadership, is not always morally correct. And that is what I like what Kope, you're sharing with us. So just make sure that whatever you're doing leadership will be morally correct, would be done 
in the framework of certain principles. And listen, and this is important as a leader. You need to set those principles for you. Your principles must be the road. You can move across the road, but in terms of that principles will guide you say, I'm not going over this principle. Let's say this simple. I am not going to fabricate facts. I'm not going to tell lies in my journey as a leader. One of the principles, it will guide me. I'm not going to take something from somebody else that does not belong to me. And that includes taking their whatever they have achieved and indicating, well, I have done that. And how many of us work in workplaces? We often we see the manager say, oh, look at what I have achieved. And you just think you haven't done it. That was me. It was me, not you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that person is not a leader. That person is not a leader because fundamental leaders have have, uh, have principles. And that's why we have the word of like spiritual leaders and things like that, that we also call and, 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 and creating the path. In the work of Poros that you have done, you have created a, a very specific, very nice thing about how your principles must guide you and setting your goals, um, engaging with people, uh, engaging with your goals in the type of goals that you set. Because as I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, leadership can also be destructive. Leadership can always, always have a negative outcome or a negative output. Leadership don't have just positive. Some of these guys that is engaged in criminal activities, guy, ladies and gentlemen, if you study a little bit of them, you will see the most amazing leadership potential that is with that people. They are amazing leaders, okay? But for all the wrong reasons, okay? All right, okay, so any questions, guys? Any thoughts, any comments, anything you want to share before I just share one or two more slides for us for this for today. Let's open the mic and talk to us. Sanet, say hunt, uh, thumbs up there. Thank you, Sanet. All right, great stuff. Let me just show us here a few more thoughts for us on our slides here. I mustn't get lost in my own. All right, so everybody can see that. So there are some more benefits and advantages of leadership, and one of them is the feeling of power and prestige. And often we see that that leaders do become powerful and in the way they direct. And I also hope that you as mothers and fathers also feel that sense of power uh, in the way that you lead your children and hopefully your children will see you as leaders, as a person which could be strict, but also a person that create opportunity, uh, that allow the freedom for them to grow and to develop. So if you are too scared to practice leadership in a corporate environment, go and practice leadership at home. You can make a few mistakes there. Um, I, I pretty believe your children will forgive you as we go along, um, and someday they will understand, but I think it's a good place. But think for a moment as well, how do you behave within your community? Specifically, if you have that potential to become a little bit of a leader in your community, um, what do you do with the power that people gives you? Do you use that power to trample on people, to mislead people, or do you use your power to empower somebody else? Do you use your power to make yes. other people great? Because if you don't do that, you are not living the world of leadership. A chance to help other people, grow other people. And why, ladies and gentlemen? Because sometimes when you become a leader and you have power, and I always say to managers and organizations, keep in mind that in organizations, managers, team leaders, um, supervisors, doesn't matter what you call them, guys, remember, they have legitimate power. Why have you received that power? You've received that power to make decisions so that you can remove barriers for other people and to help them to achieve their goals and objectives. There's a potential of high income. Respect, definitely. 
and a feeling of being in on things. So, you know, I'm in a leadership position. I know what's going on in an organization and the ability to bring about or to achieve a goal. Any person at any age that takes on their studies and ladies and gentlemen, life, I've waited very really long to eventually got to my own situation. And as you are studying today, I am a PhD candidate at the University of Johannesburg. Um, I'm in my second year. I am busy collecting my dates and things. So I must already start writing, and probably by next year this time, um, I will be done with my with my PhD. It was always a dream. I never had felt the right space. Uh, I always had a bit of kind of uncertainty in myself. Will I be able to achieve that? So I didn't do that when I was 30 or 20, like some people will do. So I've waited until I get to 50 and then I've decided, all right, it's now time to do a PhD. So, and can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, why I'm doing my PhD? And I'm not doing it because I want anybody to call me a doctor or trying to get more prestige in life and everything. All right. In my interview, people have asked me why you wanted to do it. And I say, yes, you know why I'm doing my PhD? I'm doing it for my mother. She was the only person in my entire life that doesn't matter what have happened, have believed in me as an individual, a person, and what I can accomplish. And I said to this, for only one person am I doing this. I'm doing it for my mother, for nobody else. And I think that becomes important, ladies and gentlemen, is why do we do things? Why are we busy engaging? Why do I want to become a leader? Do you want to become a leader because you want to, you know, have the status and people tell you how important you are and praise you and it's everything about you, you and you and more about you and you? Then I would like to say, guys, you are on the wrong track. Leadership is not about you. Leadership is about other people. Leadership is about your ability that when you get to that point, what do you do for the people that's left behind? So, ladies and gentlemen, probably that's why I've become an academic and probably why I love my students. And um, and keep in mind that I've worked through some of your CVs and I've seen and, I've, and some of you have written down your salaries and things there. And I was thinking as while I was reading through this, I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm in total wrong uh, industry working in academics, um, <laughs> um, uh, they, they are people, they are people earning much more money than me. Um, but at the end of the day, every one of you that is here with me today, every one of you that's on this program, and I've done this always, ladies and gentlemen, it is so critically important for me that all of you must achieve this qualification. Now, Obviously, in this situation, I can do a lot to help. But because of we have mentioned the principles there, let me just go back there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mrs. Kope, they know. Unfortunately, I'm not just going to give you marks. You also need to bring your little bit of um, contribution to the table. But it is for me so important that each of you achieve this qualification. For whatever reason you are whatever reason you have to do this. I want to see all of you on the stage next year. When we giving out when you have other graduation and when you're going to earn this qualification. I will do everything in my power to help you to get there. But you need to also bring your sight. I cannot do it alone for you. If you bring your part to the package, I can promise you we're going to have a great journey. And ladies and gentlemen, I've worked with in my career, many, many groups like in the corporate world, like we're working now. And my privilege to work with APSO the first time. Um, I've previously worked with Standard Bank and I've and the names of other companies. And for me, it's the most important to see every one of you achieving that end goal. Is it going to be an easy journey? <laughs> no. <laughs> I am not going to promise you that. <laughs> I will um, I will I will I will tell a lie if I promise you that that this is going to be just an easy journey. Walk in the park, <laughs> you know. Um 
we're not going to Disney World, um, guys. So do I need to give that a bit of effort? Do I need to put in? You will have to do that. But I'm going to be here to help and assist you on this journey. And I've always have done that for my students. And ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you in all the groups I've worked, I have I have not many all in the first attempt, but some, some people's students may have supplementary and things, but I almost have always about the 97% pass rate on my programs that I'm doing. Okay. So that's the reason why I'm here. Okay. I'm not yet to get any kind of accolades from APSA. Quite frankly, I could care nothing about that. Um, I don't care about who's an APSA and who's important here. Your guys are in front of me online now you are the guys that's important for me you are the guys that's with me on this journey and i would like us to accomplish and achieve this journey so that we can look back and say wow look at what i've done and age is irrespective of this age is irrespective of this doesn't count so what is the negative about leadership just maybe a few thoughts i want to share it could require long hours ladies and gentlemen sometimes i do work incredible long hours but I know why I'm doing that. Um, not enough authority to care responsibilities. That was it. Loneliness. Sometimes leaders feel lonely. And they feel the only people on the planet. Too many problems involving people. Yeah, I know. Well, uh, as your leader, uh, not everybody going to be always happy. Né? And then also the organizational politics and conflicting goals. And we'll find that obviously in the corporate world. Um, and that often where you are. And guys, and I think that you'll see that not just in the organization, you'll see that in your communities, you see in your churches, you see it in any place that there will always be people that have different ideas, different priorities, different things of reasons. And part of the leadership role is to, and you guys have said it, to help those people to realign their thinking, to realign their energy, to say but this is where we are going here is the dream here is the vision here is what we would like to achieve and every organization ladies and gentlemen have set out to do something apsa has got a dream apsa has got a vision studio has got one um a school have got one and it's the importance of a leader to help people to align towards that dream and in this process of this journey, not everybody is going to fully say, but I can believe in this dream. I can believe in this purpose. I can believe in what we are achieving. And then, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for each of you to sit down, have a conversation with yourself and say, but is this my journey? Must I be here? And often you need to change direction because this may not be your true north. This must not be your north where you are going. Yours might be somewhere different. Or at another place. And leaders have the ability to have that honest, open conversation with themselves and share this with them in the journey and make the required changes, even though that might be quite challenging. All right, so let me pause here, ladies and gentlemen, for a moment and let me just hear from your side. Come. Write a little bit there. Barnes says that's going to disappear there. Why don't you haven't say anything? Maybe just share with us quickly before load shedding. Give us some views. Give us some input from your side on leadership. I would I would really like to hear. Um, yeah, that's actually a very interesting question, especially in the corporate world. And actually, do they allow us to be leaders? That's my biggest question because sometimes they. they <laughs> I mean, I'm a manager and I have to manage. I'm not necessarily get to lead because I'm not really allowed to because everything just trickles down. So it's all good and well to send us on a leadership course and tell us, oh, you've got to be a leader and inspire people. But you can do, only do so much if the culture of the corporation or the place that you work for actually changes the setup and the culture within the organization to actually allow you to be an effective leader. I mean, you can lead this hell of, a, hell of a lot. And as I read in the book, it says you need to have some form of power. If you don't have any power, <laughs> you can't really lead. <laughs> you, you can say whatever you bloody want to. It's never going to change. 
Well, you, 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 so so it's 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 yes. In the end, it's it's your choice to stand up and make decisions for yourself. Mm. But are you allowed to do it? Mm. And how is it going to affect you as a person? Affect you in your career going forward, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it, it's it's not a simple, straightforward, one size fits all. Mm. Bharat is giving us a little bit of a reality check here. Thank you, Bharat, for that. I do appreciate that. And 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 you're quite right. Um, once we get into the corporate world, and you've been in the corporate world long enough, you kind of like realize, like, oh, guys, well, just toe the line here. Um, uh, if this is direction, let's go. Uh, let's do this. But let me share this with you, Warren. I think one of the things for me in leadership is also. And and remember, I said that I mean you can lead, you can lead from anywhere where you are, okay. And leadership did not have to be this super glamorous, world stage event, giving getting an, the biggest accolades and Oscar and you know all those kind of things. That's not what leadership is about. Leadership manifests itself often in very small situations in very small places. So we sometimes, I think, underestimate actually to what extent we are leading. But what is quite important, well, then I know that the moment you're getting like in a bigger corporate environment, there is the tendency of, but wow, can I really lead here? Is it really possible? Well, one of the things that I always share with managers, and, and this is to say to him that first I ask them, do you believe in the leadership, do you believe in the vision, in the purpose and the reason for the existence of your organization you are working with? Do you believe in what they would like to accomplish? Now, if you ask me that question, and what if you want to, you can answer that question now, you can always, or you can answer it later, uh, or you can write for me in an assignment about this. But if I look at Stadio, and give my guys, Stadio is a new organization because we have been, with, as, a, as an organization has been amalgamated through a lot of entities. And I come from a very smaller business school. We were like, we were like a family. And now I'm selling in big corporates. But I've been in big corporates before. Um, and the question is, when I ask people is, can you truly believe in what this organization stands for? Stadio stands for widening access, giving people opportunity, making people ready for the world of work. The question I need to ask, do I believe in that? And if I say, yes, I believe in that, then my actions and what I'm doing and what I engage with, it's going to be directly to work towards that. And I'm going to find synergy in that. But more important, because I'm going to get youngsters, I'm going to get people joining me in organization. Do I have the ability to influence in that way that those people that I've appointed, and keep in mind is that you can do obviously a lot in recruitment to make sure you appoint the correct person that may have the kind of correct attitude, the kind of correct behavior, the kind of what the correct thing is needed, to believe in what APSA is doing. But can I really influence my subordinates in such a way that they can voluntarily believe in this organization they're working for? and voluntarily take part in this organization while I am the manager? Or am I going to force them to toe the line? Uh, Chalisa, can you just mute your mic there for me? Okay, I've done it. Sorry, that's good. All right, so, Baron, so, so, so I think that is part of it. So it's also about how you lead your staff. Make them believe in what the organization believe in. Make them to voluntary so that it's not always a situation of commanding, instructing, which is typically what managers managers do. And then keep in mind is the whole question also of, because we've heard about influencing. So the ability to not just influence downward, but to influence upward in organization. In other words, the way that I influence senior management so so those are things that becomes quite important is my ability to influence upwards in the organization and ladies and gentlemen and that is something i've started to practice and often it, it's very difficult now, i can be honest i must be quite honest with you and when you work in a radical organization with a particular structure 
to really start influencing the leaders up in your organization becomes quite a interesting, but I think it's an important part of leading, specifically when you know that the people that's there, the managers or leaders, they are not really leading the organization in a direction of where this organization is supposed to go. And I always challenge everybody, start to learn to lead upwards as well. OK, and often you need to bite your lip. Often you need to hold your tongue. Often you're going to be disappointed. Often you're going to like, eh, let me just take leave before uh, I do something to somebody. But that's a reality. Again, that asks the leadership. And that becomes the more important thing, ladies and gentlemen, about your strengths in terms of dealing with your emotions. And that's why emotional intelligence is such an important concept, and you'll study that also in your in your in your in your thing. That's why emotional intelligence becomes such an important concept in leadership. And a recent study they've done at the University of Northwest, and where they've asked leaders, what kind of people do you would like to have in your organization? What kind of leaders do you see? And they would say, that, and and a lot of top 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 um, uh, uh, senior people in, in in big corporations around the world. And they've said that we would like to see our managers, people that they can lead um, uh, within calmness. They can they can have control of their emotions. They can deal with difficult situations without getting upset, screaming, shouting, throwing the toys at the cot, but can remain calm, um, direction, uh, work through that, look at that, analyze that. That will become important. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you right now that I, not even myself, can get that right all the time. And I really have to work on that all the time. Is that in storms and in challenges and in changes, how do you stay calm, stay focused, stay online, what we need to achieve, work through that turbulence um, and, and get to the other side? All right, there's a hand up there. Who speak to us, open the mic there. Oh, okay, is that the hand testing? All right, just waving at us. All right, thank you. All right, that's no, close. Hi, Hank. I want to yes. say something. <laughs> All right, I'm listening. Yeah, it just took forever to to open my mic there. Yeah, but I wanted to ask about because I want to agree that we all we can all be leaders, ne? But then there are people who who do not like conflict and they avoid it by all means possible and they don't want to get into it with anyone so i just wanted to understand those people in leadership positions how does it go about well it, well again it's one of those is one of those realities that we have in life is that often you find people that is difficult to deal with conflict situations like them and i've got managers like that in my organization as well i not necessarily regard them as leaders all right uh, they they may have i think it's neat. but again it may be also that they have a particular weakness and this is a way to deal with conflict and i think what becomes important is then the decision about and this is now what transactional leadership is about is how do I deal with that kind of situation from my from my point of view? How do I approach that kind of person so that that person doesn't seem to be uh, seems that I'm going to interrogate them or I'm going to antagonize them or I'm going to trigger? All right. So. All right. Sorry, there's one something. Hope you must run to your manager. <laughs> okay. All right. Great stuff. So so again is. What can I do as an individual to build first trust with that particular person to start to engage with the person from my side? Um, and you might get some situations where it's going to be totally impossible. You have to walk away. And I always say to people, if that's reality, walk away. Don't go to us, but always first try. Get a trust of the person, engage with the person, listen to this person, share with this person. And as you gain a bit more trust and as you start learning a little bit more, eventually you might start the ability to start talk about the more difficult things. But what do we do often is that is the way that we respond to things. And I do that as well, ladies and gentlemen, is that I am now angry about something. I'm cross. I want to confront you now. So I'm ready to fight. OK, and what does that person do normally? We know that the person is just going to like close down. The doors are going to close down. And you're not going to get any response from that individual. So that becomes the, the challenge. 
how, what do we do to work through that? So in other words, that's why I'm saying lead yourself before you lead other people. So we need to sit back and say, how do I approach? And ladies and gentlemen, I've seen amazing leaders around the world. And one of the leaders, our own company, our, our chief executive officer, an amazing person, amazing leader. He can read people. He can engage with people. He can, you could be so angry about something. And I'm telling you, within one minute being in his conversation, you are calm. You just have the ability to calm down and then to open up and to have a good, solid, good conversation. And I think that is what I've seen in life and what we can strive to. Sarah say you need to be brave, rip the band aid off, ask for honesty and want transparent in your conversation. Um, Sarah, well, I mean, that is definitely a strategy you can follow. So sometimes you need to kind of confront directly. Sometimes you need to face that and talk directly. Sometimes you know that if I'm going to do that, I might scare the person and they might totally run away and we're not going to accomplish anything. As a leader, I and this is about transactional um, and transformational, is to say, but whoa, I just need to approach the person a little bit different and maybe a different approach. Um, and to get the person to buy in before we start with more, the more difficult conversations. So just that little bit of change can make a big difference. Ramio said there is uh, something deeper to conflict avoidance. Yeah, no, you, you're quite right, um, Ramio. Um, there are many people that wants to con that doesn't like conflict. They want to they want to avoid it at all case. There will always be conflict. And all about how you handle it. Tell a person to take a break, take a walk, and then come back and deal with the situation. 100% correctly. Liesl. We are all different. We all need to deal with um, differently. You're 100% correct. And one of the abilities of leaders to understand those differences is to understand that people is different. And it's the understanding that when I deal with people, I need to deal with the people, I need to approach people in different ways. And it's about learning. One of the most important competence, ladies and gentlemen, in the century we are living in is the ability to understand, is people management. It is written in all the textbook. You will hear that in all conversations, is the ability how to manage people. And that is means to be inclusive, to be open, to be transparent, to make sure that you participate. Honesty, all right. But we have to be careful as how we do that. It's also about understanding how the other person think, giving the person opportunity to vent, to share, even though you may not like what a person is saying. Um, and then still to remain, uh, stay calm and let us work through that conflict and get to a point. But the way we're managing people, I know, ladies and gentlemen, it's a big conversation in organizations. It's a, it's a, it's a big issue in, in today's day uh, because we know that people want to have leaders that's more open, more transparent, that you can approach more, you can talk to them, you can sit down, you can share your views without being crucified, without um, making career limited statements, uh, without all those kind of things. Now, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, in real life, that's not always situation. We don't get it always. Uh, there are some leaders like that. I've met some amazing leaders like that. I can share with uh, our CEO, I can share my thoughts and feelings, even though he may not like it, but he will never hold it against me. Um, and, 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 and I think that becomes quite important. Russell, you are 100% correct. Thank you for sharing that. Your approach and every day determined outcomes. Absolutely, I agree with you. It's how you go into and how you're going to deal with that. But just understanding where the other person comes from and what it is the other person wants to share with you make a big difference. And I know many of us fail there. And I will be the first person say that I'm failing in many situations, right? Um, and that I'm definitely not perfect. Nobody is perfect there but we can learn that. And as I mentioned, it's more important is that, and that's what leaders do, is they, they create an atmosphere of openness, they create, the, move away the barriers so people can share, create inclusivity, do those kind of things. Uh, Russell always says the way you can always practice those kind of things is obviously in your family, né? Um, and see if that works there, all right? Uh, because often mm -hmm. your family, not everybody can just run away uh, if you make a mistake. Uh, organizations, the, the 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 consequences can be far greater. Uh, I think in a safer environment, like for example, your family, uh, to be practice uh, that kind of thing. 
All right, guys, any any thoughts, any further ideas? All right, I just want to see if there's maybe one or two things more I would like to share with you in terms of the slides. <laughs> All right, so maybe this also help us to understand a little bit. They thinking outside the box is difficult for some people. Keep trying. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and guys, I, you know, I, I, personally, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not an expert in anything in the banking sector, but I also know my previous, my previous head of school uh, did uh, come from the banking sector. He was a banker um, uh, in APSA for uh, quite a bit of his career. And then later in uh, FNB and, and then later in RMB and those banks. And what I've learned to understand as well is that the banking industry is a really highly regulated industry. So obviously, opportunities for creativity and things might be limited. Now, just to share with you, I'm also from education working also in a very highly regulated environment from the Department of Education and SACO and all those entities. But there are still space within organization where we can be creative and creative in a way we're doing things. Um, without stepping over the boundaries of what the regulator needs us to do. All right. All right. So in study unit two, ladies and gentlemen, just briefly, um, just want to share with you. I'm just going to share with you a few thoughts on the difference between leadership and management. So. Um, in very simple terms, managers are there to plan, organize, and then implement things, which sometimes we call leadership, and then to control. So, and this could mean that you can do this uh, on different levels. So you can plan operationally, tactically, strategically, uh, in projects you can plan. But what it in essence means is that planning means that I'm setting goals, I'm setting targets, um, I am uh, setting deadlines, I'm getting teams together, I'm organizing people, getting those people. That's a typical task of what managers will do. Getting the right people to be at the right time at the right place so we can do the right thing, uh, driving our budget, managing the finances, getting that right. And then the, the third part of management is what we call implementation. And op implementation is, is often called in leadership. And this is where the difference come in, is then how do I implement this plan? How do I actually um, drive this plan forward? Am I now going to use the power that I've received? Because if you are a project manager, if you are a supervisor, if you are a team leader, you have been given certain powers in the organization. Am I going to use my power to drive these people to achieve what we must achieve? And in the process, I drive them in. I drive them insane. Um, or am I going to influence them rather and take them voluntarily with me to achieve what we must do in the workplace? And that, for me, ladies and gentlemen, is the big, big difference. This is an important lesson. Okay, managers typically will drive people by using their authority, by using their authority by stamping down and say, but I can tell you to do this. This is a big difference versus influencing people, engaging with them, get them onto your team, empower them and let them work together voluntarily. Not that I feel, but they are forced. All right. Uh, I think Romy is saying is approaches everything. So you really can avoid conflict or cause it just by how you approach. Absolutely, absolutely, Romy. And again, in the way you approach your work, in the way you approach your, your, your team, in the way you approach the task at hand that we must do, that's what you every day must do. And guys, I am a no illusion. Sometimes we are under extreme pressure. Sometimes it's a little bit and that happens in my world. And then sometimes we don't have really time to sit down, discuss, have a conversation over a cup of coffee. And sometimes we just have to do things. And sometimes they have to be done in a certain way. 100% with that. But I think what's still important, even though we have all of those things, it's still how do I engage with my people? How do I start by getting onto my team 
voluntarily, not because I'm your leader, not because I'm your boss, not because I'm the manager or the team leader or the supervisor, and you must now obey me and you may my rules. No, no listen, not. we have to change this around. And people really feel that I want to be on your team because you've got an amazing team. Uh, you achieve a lot, you do a lot, you get the accolades, but the people are also happy because they are doing what they feel voluntarily. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a big difference between what managers will do and sometimes do, and leaders will try then to do it in a different way. So remember that big difference there. And then the last thing about management is to control. Now, managers control. So they check the work of people. They um, look at how you complete this form. There's no signature here. There's no that. And you need to do that as well, okay, because it's important. In a regulatory environment, um, even with, with us, and I always see people in terms of, I mean, you guys got the application forms, you must sign application forms. We don't have application form. You're actually not supposed to be here. Um, and I always say, wow, oh, who worries about that? But it must be done. And I need to get a signature. But more important for leaders is about not control, but what I call evaluation. Are we achieving what we must achieve? Are we looking at the outcomes that we are achieving? Um, if we have to make target, are we making this target? Are people feeling that they're contributing to the target that we are driving? Or are they forced to drive this target? Will there be a negative consequences if they if they not achieve this target? Or will people positively just engage and say, I want to be in this team. I want to drive this. I want to be part of this. I want to be part of this. I told our CEO the other day, I told him, and that I'm telling to you guys because I'm now on your team here, ne? and I, I might next time I'll leadership, I'll see you again in management. I might not be your lecturer for that. It might be one of the other lecturers, but now you're part of my team, but all of you are part of my team. And I want to see you succeed in my team because I don't work for losing teams. I don't like to lose. All right. Um, and we're losing doesn't mean that we always have to win the game and you know, that's not what it's about. But here we are working together in this team to achieve something. And for you, it's about achieving this qualification. And many of you may have different reasons why you're doing that. And I really would like to be part of that and be part of this little bit story of helping you to grow success in your life, whatever that success will be for you after this. Because I don't know your journey. I haven't engaged with you. I don't know where, where are you heading? What is your personal goals? But I would like during this small time that we spend together to believe that we can make a meaningful contribution towards what you want to achieve one day in life. And it doesn't have to be big. Every little bit can help you in your journey ahead. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, it's your journey. You don't have to be in a competition with somebody else. It's your journey. You determine your time frames. You complete your journey in time. But most important, complete your journey. Because ladies and gentlemen, and this is a very truth, and many leaders realize that, we do not know how much time we've got left. None of us. Okay? All right. But I know while I'm here is what I can do. So I'm not start thinking about and say, well, you know what? I may not have a lot of time left. So why would I do that? That, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the biggest things that kill leadership. Is that to say, well, we don't have enough time. So, you know, why would we bother that? OK. In the work of Viktor Frankl, he has done research and it was on, based on the German Nazi camps, ladies and gentlemen, not Jews. And what did he have experience? And, and he's, he, they've, they've printed his book again. I, I've just ordered a new copy for that book for me. Um, he was a, a, a psychiatrist. And Viktor Frankl have asked the question, why did some people survive the Holocaust? Why did they survive? And why did some people did not survive? And there's many reasons. But one of the most profound reasons that Viktor Frankl have discovered and in, and, and in his interviews with a lot of the people that eventually have survived the, 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 the Nazi concentration camps, is that the people that have survived, they are 
all of them, while they were there in the most, most horrendous situation, have still have said, ladies, still have got to say, when I'm done here, I have something important that I have to go to do in life. And they have shared with Victor Frankl all those stories, and I'm not going to go in all of them because they're all different stories. But while they were there, even in the most worst situation of their life, the possibility they were going to die tomorrow, they still have said that there's something that I want to do after this. And what they have discovered later, ladies and gentlemen, is that when the people that were selected that need to go and die versus the people that eventually have survived, they have looked in the eyes of the people and the people that have still had the dream, still wanted to go and do something, had a sparkle in their eye. The others that have given up had death in their eyes. And this was most of the people that have ended up in some of the chambers. So the work of Viktor Frankl was profound and a lot of other people have done research on that. They have tell us that those people that still have something they want to do, still have a purpose, still want to go and do something. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the people that survive. Those are the people that doesn't matter how bad my situation is, still rise above everybody. So ladies and gentlemen, what I would like to do is there's only about seven minutes left for our first session and I just want to conclude. So what I would like to do is I just want each of you to write for me quickly for five minutes. Just write very shortly. What have you learned about leadership in the session? What have you learned about leadership? And you can write, feel free, write anything that you like. Write something for me there and we're going to share with everybody. What have you learned? What have you experienced? What have you noticed, you know, about leadership? Going to give you about, say, two or three minutes. Write something for me. Um, Sarah, I will I will start communicating soon with you guys about that. And I also next week at uh, the class, I will share a little bit on the topics and what you need to look for the for the online test. All right. But next week I will share information about that. Thank you for that question. I already see some nice things coming in. They share with us, guys. Write down. <clears throat> Give me your thoughts. Write down your thoughts. Any thoughts, anything. This is not a test, not about being right or wrong. Give you another minute for writing down your thoughts and ideas for me. If everyone can please write something, that will be great. Right, great stuff. Let us start sharing some of the thinking there. 
Uh, guys, so so uh, next week I will start sharing with you a little bit on the MCQs that you're going to do and what you need to do to prepare for that. But in the meantime, what I can ask guys is just start to a little bit reading up in your textbook. Uh, I always say, look at your textbook as if you are going to read another storybook and, and start up reading it every night. Read a little bit like you will do like with an, any other book, all right? Um, so don't, don't, you know, don't be selective in the reading. Um, um, read a whole book, you know, great. Read them again like we do with a good book. All right. Um, there is, Lidl say, leadership is not about me, it's about us. Little, absolutely, I agree. I have learned that the leader stays the course. That's all, absolutely. If you if you sit down and I will share with you as we go along some other very interesting case studies, I, um, I will share with you guys. I'm going to send you through some links to videos. And it is such an incredible importance to decide the direction. This is what you achieve, and then you absolutely need to sit you, sit you, put your head down and, and, and absolutely go for that. I've learned that doing this might not be about now, but something I might do in the future. Absolutely, isn't it? Um, this is kind of building blocks to something. And often, and, and you, you can't put like, you can say I'm going to achieve this at 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, you know, but eventually, I believe that once you get to your 40, it's where some of the building blocks start, you know, piece of the puzzle get together and we start formulating a little bit of a story. And what is very important here, Sonet, is what you're sharing with us is then that often when you do this, then you will start discovering what is your purpose in life? What is the reason for your existence? Why have you been born? And I'm just raising the questions. So I'm not going to go any further into that, but I would like you just to remember that it's very important questions. It's about influence and authority. Felicia, absolutely. Um, I, I cannot agree with, with you more. And, and you know what? We, we're all failing on that one so often. It's easier to tell people uh, by means of authority, give them instructions, say you have to do it as well, to try to influence them so that they will do it out of free will. It's about the people they, they lead and not themselves. Absolutely. Turn need to empower others, need to have purpose. Ah, there it comes out. Know uh, why you're doing this uh, course. Dream big, keep going, lead in the situation that comes your way. Be authentic, Lynn, yeah. And, and, and life can get tough, eh? It will always throw you curveballs. Uh, and if that's not happening, then, uh, then you're not living life. Then you're hiding somewhere in a safe place. Being authentic, I like this, we are all human. Owing mistakes and doing things better, understanding your mistakes. Today you helped me realize that what I knew about leadership is limited. There's so much to it that we have either not explored or have been limited in terms of understanding in the context. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot to it. Uh, Romeo, thank you for sharing that personal. I think that's so great. That's what leaders do. Uh, they, 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 they share their limitations. They, they, they share things that I don't know. And it's not about becoming great in, in everything you want to do. We cannot, be, we cannot be experts in everything in life. We cannot. But what leaders will do is they know the people that can help them to overcome whatever limitations uh, they may have in life. And, and they know how to help other people again, which the leader know that the person have limitations. And so they work together to raise to great situations. And ladies and gentlemen, if it, if it sounds a bit fuzzy what I'm saying, um, start reading up on leadership. There are some great case studies. There are some great stories about great leaders. And often we see great leaders in life, and but we often don't see it's like an iceberg. Uh, we don't see the sacrifices. The big part of that is underneath the sea, not the little bit that you see on top, but the big parts underneath the iceberg. I learned that leaders should have control over themselves. Yeah, very important, Justin. Um, committing to results is what I've learned. Absolutely true. The type of leader you are is your choice. Hey, Warren, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you could be an authentic leader, a leader that wants to make a positive contribute, or you could be a leader that wants to destroy, that wants to break down, and you can do it spectacular. <laughs> you can destroy things spectacular. <laughs> Um, and we hope we have more leaders that really would like to build and grow and and more important to leave something 
when we're not here anymore. Uh, to leave something for our children, uh, which they can aspire to and which they can build on. Leadership is a blessing and a curse. Right? Yeah, ooh, great stuff. That's also true. It's, so you need to have a clear path and a good moral compass. I like that one, moral compass. Each one of has the ability to lead. 100%, 100%. Leadership not about controlling people or authority. Thank you, Inc. You are definitely in the role that you were made for. Oh, thank you very much, Annette. I've been in teams for from this morning, actually till now, and I have been able to focus and you have kept me focused. So, Annette, thank you very much. Um, your guys is what's inspiring me. And um, it's so important for me that I want to see the success that you achieved. I would like to start with the Simon as soon as possible and not leave it for a week before. Will there be an assignment template that we were not to complete? Um, Justin, very shortly, no, there is no assignment and template. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. So what's important, you can just do your assignment and you can just put on your name and your student number. That's fine because you are going to upload it onto Canvas and it is going to go through Turn It In. And I will send you guys information about this. So it's going to be a similarity. And the moment we use a template, it just chases up the similarity. Uh, that's why we keep it very simple. But I will start, I will next week, because this week we're still getting people uh, on board. We just make sure everybody is with us and everybody's on the ship. And it must be on the ship and everybody got everything. So from next week, I'll start sharing a bit more information with you guys on what to expect in terms of the assignments, the MCQs that's coming and how to do things. I will share with you. So look out for my emails, my WhatsApps, and also on Canvas. There's leadership ability in all of us. Just need the uh, activation, a little bit of discipline. Absolutely, Rose. True. Leadership about being transparent and open with your team. Be a leader that will motivate and mold the people in the team. Team grow comes ab uh, above their own. Good leadership is a key to successful teams. Um, absolutely, uh, Lavashni, I agree with you. Um, and it's also to understand the dynamics of the teams, the difference in the teams, dealing with the conflict. Um, it's really about all of that. At least about handling a conflict, how you use your legitimate power that you have. Yep. Probably if you if you misuse that power and you don't get results, don't ask questions. Ne? Um, use your power carefully. Um, there is uh, people out there that may not always appreciate that we want to just manage things by using our power. And sometimes we have to just do it different. I just want to lastly say with you guys, uh, Rose will say, I'm not just sending your group email. I had to ask someone to form me the link. Rose uh, just uh, sent me an email regarding this. I'll make a note, but just send me an email as well. So I can just check on my um, on my group email because there's no, there's, and I've, I've made sure I've got all the right email addresses and because, and there's nothing bouncing back also so but so but please just send me an email and i will double check that i make sure that that i also in communication with you normally what i do guys as well is when i send an email i will send you whatsapp to say to you i've sent an important email because i know you may not always you know may miss the email or may not look at that because you're receiving a lot of emails so i always send you whatsapp just to say check for my email it's an important one just to make sure i i do like open communication and make sure that everybody's on the same page um, so we have started very quickly with this. There was some bit of challenges to in terms of the of the of giving over. Uh, you know, it's like in that in a in a uh, in a in a hurdles race. Not well, in a hurdles race in a we 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 have to give over the stick. And uh, although you plan very well and everything, um, you know, there's always some challenges that may arise. But I think we have dealt with them most of them in an adequate way. Just sorting out a few of the last things. No. No, copy. there will not be an assignment cover, as I've just mentioned that the reason why we don't have an assignment cover your name, because you remember you're, like, you're uploading your assignment to your unique student number. It will it will go, it will it will lie directly with you. It doesn't matter even if you upload it from from uh, doesn't matter from which email you upload it from your apps or whatever. You have a unique um, uh, space in terms of your student number which is linked to that part. So if you upload it, your assignment immediately lies with your student number. It cannot get it cannot get confused. All right. So uh, on the system, even if you don't put your name on your assignment, uh, if you've got to do that, it doesn't matter because it will show me this is your student number. This is your name. This is your assignment. Even if you didn't put your name there, it doesn't matter. It will it will make no difference. 
but we don't use the assignment cover because of the question of similarity, which I will share next week information about that and just to prevent uh, that. So for the first module, guys, so I will be continuously communicating to all of you, um, just making sure that you are know what to do, what when to do, and when things happen. And then once we've got through model one, then you know we will all be in the same part. And then model two and model three, we will we will it, it's going to be a breeze. Then we are in the air. We can sit down. We can relax. We can open the wine and the beer, and we can have a nice flight uh, for the last two models. Keep in mind that your third module that we're going to do research methodologies. You're not writing an exam there, so that even is a there's a, a nice benefit that on the last one we're doing next year, you don't have to sit down or write any exam. Uh, but I'll give you more details as we go along. So, ladies and gentlemen, from my side, I would like just to thank everybody for attending our first online session. It was great, even though it's online. Um, maybe I must just ask everyone, can you just maybe put on your cameras for a second? I just want to look at your faces just quickly. <laughs> if I can ask that as the last part. Let's put on that cameras quickly. I just want to see who I'm talking to. Hey, great stuff. Where's the other people? Put on the cameras. Great stuff. There, Sarah. Great stuff. Marinda. <laughs> Hello, Liesl. <laughs> All right. Nice to see some names. Ah, Elias. Ah, great stuff. Okay, there's Justin. Hope. Ah, Russell. Great stuff. Like your picture in the back. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, guys. Just for sharing there. And I hope that once we have graduated and on graduation, I hope that everybody will be here. Uh, it will be uh, in it, the location will be in Pretoria on our mega campus in Centurion. So uh, so for those who are not here in the province, uh, start saving. Romeo, <laughs> I like your bike there. Ah, you're also cycling. Great stuff. We can cycle together. Um, so. Uh, our graduations this year in 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 Pretoria and Centurion, our mega campus. So, for those who is not in this province here, maybe a bit far away, maybe some time just to put a few bucks away every month that you can be able to come up. Um, I would love to see everybody at our graduation um, when we finished, and then our graduation, ladies and gentlemen, the former one we will be invited to will be our uh, um, spring graduation. Uh, which is in August next year. Uh, that will be our, our graduation because we'll finish in June, July. We'll finish off and then just the last bit of preparation and we'll be invited to that graduation for the advanced diploma. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great weekend. It's Friday tomorrow. Yay, yay. It is weekend. Um, we're having our yen function tomorrow. I'm off to the Val River. Um, we're going to have a bit of fun there and uh, I hope that all of you the best. Um, I will start communicating more details with you guys from Monday in terms of all the other things um, and the rest of the module and semester, just to make sure. Also, just the last request, go on to Canvas, please, because I do make announcements on Canvas as well. And um, make sure that you just familiarize yourself with that. In the meanwhile, uh, start reading up on your textbooks. Let's start open the textbook and just read it like any other story that you write reading. Just read like that. Just like a story. Go through it. I'm telling you, you will pick up so many things there. Sanet, I'm listening. Um, I think it's just in regards of my access. You can finish up and then we can just have a chat afterwards. Yes, we can. Thank you. All right, guys. So, all oh, cheers. Bye bye. I'll see you again next week. Um, have a great weekend and stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Pleasure. Thank pleasure. you. Bye. Alrighty. Bye bye. Yes. Bye. Um. So Hank, I yes. There was an email that was sent out with a red background. Where they got their, I think they got their student numbers and a link to click on. I never received that email. One of my staff is on the same course that I am. Okay. Um, so I checked on her emails. I, I haven't been able to log on to Canvas as yet. Oh, 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 okay. All right. All right. So did you 
did, did you did you actually say did you receive an email which tells you basically how to log onto Canvas? I did receive some emails, yes, uh, but but specifically one with the red background that I didn't get. One with the red background. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now I'm just making here a, a note quickly. Uh, I I will um, I'm going to send an email to our IT guy Suvengo, and also to um, Nomsa, and I'm just going to ask them to assist you to get the canvas to be activated. Um, as we have, we have, I mean, they've assisted quite a number of students. It's not too difficult, and once you're in, then 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 it then it normally works perfectly. Yes. All right. So, but just keep in mind that they will only be able to assist you on Monday. All right. No problem. Okay, because we're going to be all off to the vault tomorrow morning early, yes. and so uh, so uh, yeah, Saturday they will recover. So I'm not going to ask them to do it on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Monday's 100%. Tomorrow yeah, yeah. is a very busy day as well. So yeah, Monday no, will be but fine. yeah, but don't worry. At this stage, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing that you have really kind of missed because yes. if you have your study guide, you've got my information, you have got everything, then we are fine um and 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 kind of the dates you know but it that's good because i just need to get you up specifically for the online test okay, uh, because cool. that's going to happen so i'm going to send an email right now to them and just ask them to assist you i'll copy you in on that email and then we can just sort it out on monday and please just keep me in the loop um and just send me either an email or a whatsapp you want to and just saying yes i'm now online or no i'm still struggling or what the case because I don't sit at the office where they sit. Um, I work often from home, and I uh, and I, I, I work here from Pretoria, our mega campus in Turin, while our the office that we are working is in Krukersdorp. Okay. So I'm not at the office, but please just keep me in the loop, all right? Please don't no don't problem. think you're going to bother so me. Much. Yeah, send no me problem. email, WhatsApp anytime. Cool. All Thank right. you so much, Hank. It's a neat pleasure. Have, Have a, a great afternoon. evening. Thanks. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye.